Danny DeVito sure has played some despicable characters throughout his career. He rose to fame as the cruel and amoral head dispatcher Louie in Taxi. He currently plays the even crueler and amoraler Frank Reynolds on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And he's perhaps best remembered for his portrayal of a soiled, full-body, diaper-wearing sewer mutant who went around perving on women, trying to murder children and Voldemorting people. <laughs> And yet, if anyone even thinks about saying something bad about the man, people immediately pull out the old Danny Defender. Just so we're clear, I'm people. The reason people love Danny DeVito so much is because, no matter what monster he's playing, you can always tell that there's a genuinely nice and sweet man behind the role, which has been confirmed by countless people who've worked with him. And in this episode, we're gonna take a look at the bonkers, the hilarious, the greatest behind-the-scenes moments in DeVito's career. We're talking about giving the world one of the most influential movies ever on a lark, tricking the governator into smoking grass on set, and helping a little girl deal with one of the darkest moments of her life. This is Cannonball. Number four, Danny DeVito got Arnold Schwarzenegger stoned. After the 1988 runaway hit Twins, Hollywood decided to double down on Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito starring in movies about beating up Mother Nature with a baseball bat of science. 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 This can't be happening. The result was the 1994 comedy Junior about Schwarzenegger impregnating himself with a fertilized egg in order to test out an experimental drug meant to prevent miscarriages. Yeah, lost pregnancies. Now that's some lighthearted comedy material right there. Mama. But that doesn't mean there weren't some legitimately hilarious moments in the film. It's just that the best one happened off screen. One day during lunch, Danny invited Schwarzenegger to his trailer for some homemade Italian food. Yeah. To finish up the meal, Danny gave his co-star a cigar as thanks for all the presents that Schwarzenegger had given him during the shoot. The former governor of California recalled that the cigar was a really long one. Beautiful cigar, Monte Cristo. And so, according to Schwarzenegger, he lit up and smoked the obese cigarette in the trailer and then returned with Danny to the shoot. But when the director yelled action, Schwarzenegger found his mind totally blank. He couldn't remember any of his lines. The director tried to jog his memory by telling him, quote, you and Danny were talking about going out and now you're pregnant. Congratulations. Schwarzenegger apparently tried to go to the script supervisor to remember what the hell kind of movie he was making. He says it took him about one and a half hours to get back to normal, all while Danny was trying not to bust out laughing. Finally, DeVito came clean about what was going on. Danny put some marijuana in the front of the cigar. Yeah, Danny DeVito, as a prank, loaded up Arnold's expensive cigar with weed. It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is. While we don't condone dosing your bodybuilder friends, it was kind of appropriate on some level considering the movie they were making because there's no chance that that thing was written sober. That should be enough. Schwarzenegger says he tried to get Danny back later with the same loaded cigar prank, but it didn't work because Arnold claims that Danny has a real nose for weed and could smell it instantly. <laughs> Good thing this story only broke this year because if it had gotten out sooner that Schwarzenegger rode the Pineapple Express, it could have easily tanked his career. I started blasting, bang! Number three, Danny DeVito created a familial atmosphere. Matilda is the beloved 1996 family comedy about a girl with magic powers being horribly abused by her family. With the subplot about her school's principal killing her teacher's dad and making it look like suicide in order to inherit all of his money. Wow. Too bad we already used that giant comedy asterisk on the junior entry. Help. The movie starred Mara Wilson as the titular Matilda, with Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman playing her parents. Also, Matilda's teacher, played by Embeth Davids, was named Honey. A secret weapon. Because Roald Dahl might know how to write beautifully messed up children's books, but could maybe use some editorial input? on the names? I'm smart, you're dumb. Anyway, while DeVito's Harry Wormwood, presumably named Bad Guy Wormwood in the original draft, was a yelling, selfish, and abusive car salesman, the actor portraying him was apparently going for sainthood on the set of Matilda. Mara Wilson only auditioned for the movie because it was based on one of her mom's favorite books. Sadly, during the production, Susie Wilson was diagnosed with breast cancer, but DeVito and Perlman went out of their way to help Mara get through it. You will not leave this platform until you have consumed the entire when they weren't throwing pool parties and other events to cheer her up, they'd let Mara stay with them while her mom underwent treatment in the hospital. Mara Wilson described Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman as her favorite aunt and uncle who made her feel safe during a very dark time. They even got Mara her first American Girl doll, Molly, described on the official website as, quote, most likely to fake a turnip allergy. 
All right. You should believe in whatever power you think you have inside of you. DeVito and Perlman did so much for Wilson that when filming wrapped, she was legitimately sad and anxious about losing the family that she'd made on set. Tragically, Susie Wilson eventually lost her battle with cancer shortly before the movie's theatrical release, never getting to see it. In another universe where Danny DeVito isn't the definitive proof that man was made in God's own image. Before her passing, DeVito actually visited Mara's mom in the hospital and screened an almost completed version of the movie for her, allowing her to enjoy an adaptation of her beloved book starring her beloved daughter. So quick question, when are we officially making Danny DeVito a church saint? Now would be good, but I can make tomorrow work if we need to. Daddy, you're a crook. What? Number two, Danny DeVito bought the rights to Pulp Fiction before it was even written. When Danny DeVito first joined Twitter, he didn't know what he should post first and ultimately went with the safe and classic, my nuts are on fire. <laughs> but writing that every day would only be entertaining for like two to three years tops and Danny needed a long-term Twitter strategy. Then suddenly he was hit with divine inspiration and a social media legend was born. If I take my shoe off and I shoot my foot and I call it troll foot, there it is. That was that, yeah, you got some ice there. Danny's foot did the ice bucket challenge. It hung out with One Direction. It achieved more in a few years than three entire generations of Eismans. I bring this up to pose the following question. Was Danny DeVito always fascinated by feet and is that what made him instantly connect with Quentin Tarantino? That I love, I absolutely love. See, DeVito started his own production company, Jersey Films, in 1991, which among other things, helped give the world Pulp Fiction and propelled Quentin Tarantino to international stardom. I want to I want to please my fans, and I want to please the critics that are my fans. DeVito and Tarantino met during the premiere of Terminator 2 and talked for a total of 10 minutes. At the end of it, DeVito told Tarantino that he wanted to be involved in his next movie, whatever it was. And this was without him even seeing Reservoir Dogs or anything he'd been in. Could you do me a favor and eat my pussy for me, please? Oh, sure. In short, DeVito relied solely on his gut when he bought the rights to Pulp Fiction, before it was even written, and was probably relieved as hell when Tarantino finally sent him a script and it wasn't just a binder of troll foot Polaroids. At the time, DeVito actually had a first look deal with Columbia TriStar, but he brought them Pulp Fiction at the worst possible time. TriStar chairman Mike Medavoy had just spent a weekend having his ass chewed by the White House about there being too much violence in Hollywood. So he passed on the movie where a rapist is killed with a katana and poor Marvin gets his head popped like a tomato in a microwave. So Danny DeVito shopped the script around, finally finding it a home over at Miramax. Pig. Oh. No, uh, Nancy, that is not Harvey Weinstein. Pulp Fiction would go on to become the first independent movie to gross over $200 million with gross violence, while kickstarting the careers of Samuel L. Jackson and Uma Thurman. Samuel Jackson made painstakingly by me, Samuel L. Jackson. It'll get you drunk. Number one. Danny DeVito took his Penguin legacy extremely seriously. Tim Burton's Batman Returns was a gift to Gen Z and millennials because now whenever someone asks us, what the hell is wrong with you? We can just say, we watched DeVito's Penguin as kids and that usually ends the conversation. We'll do it another time then. What with DeVito's Penguin looking like an elderly Victorian child with a meth addiction. But despite the character's inherent ridiculousness, Danny DeVito put his heart, soul, and hard palate into the part doing whatever it took to make his performance memorable. And sometimes that included committing crimes against his mouth. For example, in scenes where Penguin eats fish, that's not a prop. It's real, raw bluefish that Danny had to stuff down his gullet during the shoot. Don't worry though, the fish probably started to taste much better after DeVito had to gargle mouthwash mixed with spirulina in scenes where Penguin oozes black blood from his mouth. <laughs> It's little touches like that that have made Danny DeVito own this incarnation of Penguin. If not legally, then like morally. And that's why when Danny DeVito wrote a comic for DC where the Penguin and Catwoman become lovers, he made sure to first call up Michelle Pfeiffer and ask if it was okay with her. Be gentle, it's my first time. It all started in 2020 when DC approached DeVito about writing for Gotham City Villains, a one-shot anthology featuring short stories about Batman's greatest villains. Uh, please, refer to me as The Calculator. All right, love the energy. Danny came up with a tale he called Bird Cat Love, where the Penguin, clearly inspired by the character from Batman Returns strikes up a romance with Catwoman over their shared love of stealing from the rich and giving mostly to themselves but with a little bit set aside for the poor. 
The story is actually kind of sweet, and the only thing that's off about it is that Catwoman is dressed in a suit that covers up her entire body, except for her armpits. Be gentle, it's my first time. Look, people have to discover their fetishes somehow, and they should feel proud if it happens to come uh. from a comic written by Danny DeVito. Sure. Anyway, the reason why DeVito asked Michelle Pfeiffer for permission to write the story was because it makes sense to ask the person instantly associated with Catwoman if it's okay with her if the two characters start making out. There isn't a law or anything requiring artists to do that, but Danny DeVito still felt the need to because a thing few people know about him is that, despite being the very picture of old school alpha masculinity, I mean, we're just the air conditioners walking around on this planet screwing each other's brains out. The actor is actually a staunch feminist who's spoken out about gender and racial inequality a lot because Danny DeVito is simply the very best of us. I will not be taking questions at this time. Thanks for watching this episode of Cannonball. If you liked it, why not like and subscribe? And if you want more in-depth reporting on Danny DeVito, head over to crack.com. I'm totally serious. We're doing an entire week of DeVito content over there. And if you don't watch it, we don't eat. My boss told me that. If you hated it, I'll come to your house and beat the 